over 50 years now, boys and girls and mums and dads have read and reread Kenneth Graham's magical story of Mr. Toad and his friends Ratty, Mole and Badger. Four animals who were sometimes so stupid and sometimes so wise that they were just like human beings. For those who've not yet had the pleasure of their company, and for the thousands who'd like to meet them again, this is the story of the wind in the willows. The badger was telling his secret plan. He spoke in a whisper, and the animals gathered close around him. Toad was quivering with excitement. You see, secrets had an immense attraction for him because he could never keep one, and he loved the thrill of telling others. There is, said the badger, an underground passage that leads from the river bank, quite near here, right into the middle of Toad Hall. Oh, nonsense, badger! said the toad. You've been listening to some old yarn. I know every inch of the hall. There's nothing of the sort, I assure you. Now look here, young fellow, said the badger with great severity. Your father, who was a particular friend of mine, discovered that passage, which is hundreds of years old, and showed it to me, thinking that one day it might be useful. But he said you couldn't hold your tongue and asked me not to tell you unless one day you were in sore trouble and really needed it. Oh, well, said Toad. Perhaps I am a bit of a talker. My friends get round me. We sparkle, we tell witty stories, and somehow my tongue gets wagging. <laughs> but go on, dear Badger. How's this passage of yours going to help us? Well, I've found out a thing or two lately, continued the Badger. I got Otter to disguise himself as a sweep and call at the hall asking for a job. He found out there's going to be a big banquet tomorrow night. It's somebody's birthday, the Chief Weasels, I believe, and they'll be unarmed and suspecting nothing. But the Sentinels will be posted as usual, remarked the Rat. Exactly, said the Badger. That is my point. The Weasels will trust entirely to their excellent Sentinels, who won't see or hear us, for the passage leads right up under the butler's pantry, next to the dining room. We shall creep out quietly into the butler's pantry, cried the mole. With our pistols and swords and sticks, shouted the rat. Rush in upon them, said the badger. And whack em and whack em and whack em, cried the toad, leaping into the air. Very well then, said the badger. Our plan is settled. I suggest now that we all retire to bed. We can make all the necessary arrangements tomorrow morning. The toad slept to a very late hour next morning, and by the time he got down, he found that the other animals had finished their breakfast some time before. The mole had slipped off somewhere by himself without telling anyone where he was going. The badger sat in the armchair reading the paper and not concerning himself in the slightest about what was going to happen that very evening. The rat, on the other hand, was running around the room, his arms full of weapons of every kind. He was piling them in four little heaps on the floor and saying excitedly under his breath as he ran, here's a sword for the rat, here's a sword for the mole, here's a sword for the toad, here's a sword for the badger. A pistol for the rat, a pistol for mole, a pistol for toad, a pistol for badger. And so on in a regular rhythmical way, while the four little heaps gradually grew and grew. That's all very well, rat, said the badger. But just let us once get past the stoats with those detestable guns of theirs. And I assure you, all we'll need is sticks. The four of us will clear the four of them in five minutes. It's as well to be on the safe side, said the rat, and he went on distributing the weapons. The toad, having finished breakfast, was rehearsing for the night attack. I'll learn them to steal my house. I'll learn them, he cried. Don't say learn them, toad, said the rat. It's not good English. It ought to be teach them, not learn them. We don't want to teach them, said the badger. We want to learn them, learn them good and hard, and what's more, we're going to. 
Then the mole came tumbling into the room and very pleased with himself too. I've been having such fun, he said. I've been annoying the stoats. I hope you've been careful, mole, said the rat anxiously. Well, I got the idea early this morning, said the mole. I found that old washerwoman's dress in the kitchen, so I put it on and went off to Toad Hall as bold as you please. The sentries were on the lookout, of course, with their guns, and their, who oh, goes there, and all the rest of their nonsense. Good morning, gentlemen, says I, very respectful. Want any washing done today? And of course the sergeant told me to run away and not bother his troops. Run away, says I. It won't be me that's running in a very short time from now. You see, my daughter washes for Mr. Badger, and what she told me, you'll find out pretty soon. This very night, a hundred bloodthirsty badgers armed with rifles are going to attack Toad Hall by way of the paddock. Six boatloads of rats with pistols and cutlasses will come up the river and effect a landing in the garden, while a picked body of toads known as the Death or Glory Toads, will storm the orchard and carry everything before them, yelling for vengeance. And there won't be much left of any of you by the time they're through, unless you clear out now while you have a chance. And then I ran away and hid, and took a peep at them through the hedge. They were as nervous and as flustered as could be, running all ways and tripping over each other, everyone giving orders and no one listening. And then I heard them complaining about the weasels and how they would be feasting in the banqueting hall while they, the stoats, would be out in the cold and at the mercy of the bloodthirsty badgers. Oh, you silly ass mole, cried Toad. You've spoilt everything. Mole, said the badger quietly. I perceive you have more sense in your little finger than some other animals have in the whole of their fat bodies. You've done splendidly. I've great hopes of you, and you're a very clever little fellow. The toad was simply wild with jealousy, more especially as he couldn't make out for the life of him what the mole had done that was so particularly clever. But before he had time to show his temper or expose himself to Badger's sarcasm, the mole diplomatically led him outside and seating him in a wicker chair made him tell all his adventures since his first day in prison. The toad's jealousy quickly became a dizzy happiness. Someone had actually asked to hear the full story of his heroic deeds. And as you understand, I'm sure, they sat out there for a very long time. It was late that evening and the rat, with an air of excitement and mystery, had summoned them all back into the parlour. The rat himself was ready for all the night should bring. Around his waist, a thick leather belt. Stuck into it, a sword on one side, a cutlass on the other. Then a pair of pistols, a policeman's truncheon, several sets of handcuffs, some bandages and sticking plaster, a flask and a sandwich case. So he stood there, every inch a warrior, and made sure that his three friends equipped themselves similarly from the piles of weapons on the floor. When all was quite ready, the badger, with stick in one hand and lantern in the other, gave his instructions. Now then, follow me. Uh, mole first, because I'm very pleased with him. Rat next, and toad last. And look here, Toady, don't you chatter as much as usual, or you'll be sent back as sure as fate. It was very dark along the riverbank, and up at the front, the badger was careful to point out to Mole any roots or holes that might make them trip. And the Mole passed the information back to the rat, and the rat passed it back to Toad. But Toad was in a world of his own, and wasn't really listening, so it was inevitable. He tripped and fell into the water. Five minutes later, after he'd been hauled out of the river, it was a very wet toad who brought up the rear of the expedition. The badger led them into a clump of trees beside the bank, where he nosed around and then murmured, Ah, yes, here we are, and lowered himself quietly into the entrance of the secret passage. 
the mole followed, then the rat, and last of all, Toad. Who didn't find it quite as easy as the others. In the passage it was cold and dark, it was damp and low and narrow, and poor Toad began to shiver, partly because he was wet through and partly in dread of what might be before him. The lantern was far ahead, and he was lagging behind when the rat called, Come on, Toad! And in fear of being left behind, he ran at such a pace to catch up that he collided with the others. Once the animals realised that it was only Toad and not an ambush by the ferrets, they continued. But only after Mole had pleaded with Badger not to send Toad back to the river bank. They'd been in the secret passage for some time when they heard far away, yet apparently nearly over their heads, a confused murmur of sound, as if people were shouting and cheering and stamping on the floor and hammering on tables. The passage now began to slope upwards and the noise grew louder and louder. My, what a time those weasels are having, said the badger. Oh, but we'll learn them. We'll learn them good and proper. We'll be Toad. Those few words from the badger really bucked up Toad's spirits, and he willingly lent a hand when the badger said, Ah, here's the trapdoor. Now, all together, heave! And so together they pushed and they heaved and they heaved and they pushed, till the trapdoor was fully opened and hoisting each other through, they found themselves standing in the pantry. The noise was quite deafening. Only a door stood between them and the enemy. Are we all ready then? said the badger, and his friends nodded their agreement. The battle was about to commence. <laughs>